Welcome back algebra students. Today we're going to be talking about solving quadratic equations by factoring in this CUDA software worksheet tutorial. Let's go ahead and get started. As you see with number one, we have two binomials here. So we have this one and this one, and they're being multiplied together to get zero. This is very common practice, and there's a lot of reasons why uh, we set it equal to zero. Um, especially when you get to graphing and you get to algebra two, you're gonna see why. But the bottom line is we need to make this a true statement. Now, what values of K will make this true? Well, if we had just K minus five, we could easily solve for K. We would add five to both sides and we say that K equals five. So if we plugged in uh, five for K, we would see that it makes a true statement. Five minus five is in fact zero. So that was just a, an example, but now we're going to actually see how this works. Well, if we have two values, what's the case here? Does it make a difference that we have two binomials? Not really. So essentially all this means is we are going to take each one of these values and we're going to set both of them equal to zero. So k plus one equals zero or k minus five equals zero. So we're going to have two answers now instead of just one. So we're going to subtract one from both sides and we get k equals negative one. And over here we add five, add five. Just okay, we did, we did before and we get k equals five. So we have two answers. Why does this work? Well, what happens if we plugged in negative one for k? So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this, but instead of writing, instead of writing uh, k, I'm going to write in negative one. So I have a negative one here and a negative one here. Does that equal zero? Well, as you can see in the right parenthesis, the right binomial, we get negative six. So we have negative six here. Well, that doesn't really help us, but take a look at this. We have negative one plus one, that equals zero. So now we have zero times a negative six. Does that equal zero? Yes, because anything times zero is gonna be equal to zero. Therefore, if this parenthesis goes to zero, or if this parenthesis goes to zero, it will make a true statement. For example, if we plug in five, well, in this parenthesis, we'd get five plus one, that's six. But then in this parenthesis, we get five minus five, that's zero. Six times zero equals zero. So if we get either binomial to equal zero, it will make a true statement. That's called the zero product property. Let me go ahead and show you with this one. So if we have, uh, this equals zero and that equals zero. We know it makes a true statement. So all we need to do is set both of these equal to zero and then solve for a. So here we get minus one minus one, a equals negative one, minus two minus two, a equals negative two. We have two answers and that's all there is to it. Some of these look a little bit more complicated. Uh, for some reason, this really, this problem really trips up a lot of my students, but it's the same process. It's just a two-step equation, but we have two of them and we have two answers. So we set them both equal to zero. If it equals zero, it will make a true statement because anything times zero will equal zero. So we do two m equals negative three divided by two divided by two m equals negative three over two. Yes, you can have a fraction as an answer. A lot of my students will ask me that question. Uh, fractions are very common. Um, so don't be surprised you get fractions as answer. So all I'm doing is inverse operations here. First I move over the, the three by subtracting it from both sides. Then I divide by four. So I get M equals negative three over four and M equals negative three over two. Now let's look at the next ones. You'll see that number five, we have all kinds of problems. Number one, we don't see that this is factored already. Number two, we notice that this is not equal to zero. So your first step, step one should be set equal to zero. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna add this five to both sides to get it out of there. We want to have it equal to zero, that's our goal. Once we add five to both sides, we get x squared minus 11x. We only add it to the like terms here. So we get plus 24. Now, step two, what do we do? Well, if it's not already factored, now we need to factor. I have uh, other videos explaining how to factor a little bit more thoroughly, but I will give you the basics here. You're always gonna start with setting up your two parentheses. I like doing a little squiggly under this first term 
and then I put two lines under the last term because the factors of the first term are going to be the the whatever multiplies together in the first slot and then our second slot is going to multiply together to give us our last term. So what I think what I think to myself is I look at x squared and I think what times what gives me x squared? So clearly x times x gives me x squared so I can go ahead and put it up there because there's no other factors of x squared. 24 is a little bit different. We have lots of factors of 24. We have 24 and 1. We have um, 12 and 2. We have 8 and 3. We have 6 and 4, and I think that's it. But here's the thing. We also could use negatives. So we could use negative 24, negative 1, negative 12, negative 2, negative 8, negative 3, negative 6, negative 4. So we have lots of options here. Let's be smart about it, though. So if I look at this middle term, the middle term is the one that really gives us an indication of what we need to do. The middle term is composed of the sum of the outside terms multiplied together and the inside terms multiplied together. Essentially, anytime there's no number in front of x squared, it's pretty easy. We're looking for the sum of the factors here, of these factors that add up to give me negative 11x. Well, if we're looking for negative 11x, there's no way we can have these positives. These positives are gonna be a no-go, a no-go because they aren't gonna add up to give me a negative. So we're gonna be looking at these only. Now, which of these add up to negative 11? Clearly not negative 24, negative one, negative two, 12, and negative two, we're getting closer. Here we go, we have negative eight and negative three. So we're gonna plug those in, negative eight, negative three. And this is the way we factor. Now you're probably thinking, oh, we're done. No, we're not. Sorry, these problems are a little bit longer. I'll do it a little bit quicker the next time, but I just wanted to give you an idea of how we go about this. Let me move this over actually. Okay, I'm gonna shrink it and move it over. So now that we have it factored, these problems are pretty simple after that. Uh, sorry, this is supposed to be an eight, easily converted. So now we have x minus three equals zero or x minus eight equals zero. We have two answers with uh, quadratics. So we get x equals three or add eight, add eight. We get x equals eight, two answers there. Uh, let's do maybe a couple more. So let's go ahead and do uh, number eight, I suppose. As you can see here, we have, oh, forgot here. Step three, that's the last thing we did. Step three, we solved. So we want a value, x equals a number, uh, and there should be two, or our variable. In this case, it's n. So our step one for number eight, we want this equal to zero, so we're gonna move that over by subtracting six. We get n squared plus three n minus 18 equals zero. Now we're ready to rock and roll. We have n, n, because those are our factors. Well, let me erase this, actually. Make it orange. Our factors of n squared, so we have n and n. And we're looking for factors of negative 18. Those go here. So we're gonna have, okay, negative 18. This is where I need a little bit of help. I'm gonna consider negative six. So keep in mind that because this is negative, the signs are gonna be opposite with the factors. So it could be like this, or it could be like this. The other thing you wanna consider, this one, mm, let me use pink. This middle term is positive. That means the bigger number needs to be the positive and the smaller number needs to be the negative because the middle term is a sum of the outside and the inside terms. So it looks like we already have our answer. I was gonna list more factors of negative 18, like nine and two, et cetera, but we have our factors here because this has a sum of positive, of positive three, so I know it's gonna be minus three and plus six, and that equals zero. So now we have our problem. We have n plus six, n minus three equals zero. So n plus six needs to be equal to zero and n minus three needs to be equal to zero. So we subtract uh, six, subtract six, we get n equals negative six, or add three, add three, we get n equals three. Those are our two answers. You're always gonna get two answers. Let's do some of the, let's do maybe one or two hard ones and then we'll set you guys loose. So here, um, in this case, one of the first things you'll notice, well, it's not equal to zero, so we're gonna move this over, minus six, minus six. We get six n squared minus 18n minus 24 equals zero. 
if you notice that there is a common factor between all three terms, your first step should be factoring out that common factor, the GCF, greatest common factor. In this case, it's six. So what happens when we divide everything by six? We get n squared minus three n minus four, and that's equal to zero. Now we can factor this, but we gotta leave this six out in front. This six does not affect the zero product property. We're still gonna set this parenthesis equal to zero and this parenthesis equal to zero. We're gonna do that later. I just wanted to give you a heads up. That's what we need to do eventually. Okay, just like we did before, those factors go here. Factors of the last term go in the second slot. So we have n and n. Then we're gonna have, uh, let's see here. We have a negative four, so we have a negative, so they need to be opposite signs, and then the outside and the inside terms, their sum needs to be negative, so the negative has got to win. So I'm thinking here that if the negative's gotta win, we have to have negative four and positive one, minus four, positive one, that gives me a negative three. We're gonna go, that's equal to zero. Now we have six n plus one times n minus four, and that's equal to zero. We are not concerned with the six. We're only concerned about the variable y. Well, let's say we have, well, we can figure out that n equals negative one here. If we plug in negative one, we get six times negative one plus one, and then negative one minus four. Does that equal zero? We have six times zero times negative five. That zero conquers all else. It doesn't matter there's a six out in front because that zero is gonna be multiplied by everything and it, in fact will be equal to zero. So we don't need to worry about that six at all. I just wanted to show you that, that's really important. So we can get n equals four and there's our two answers. Let's do one more, let's do a tougher one here. Mm, I suppose let's do, let's do number 16, that looks tough enough. Okay, so we're gonna add three to both sides to start, and then we get six b squared minus 13 b plus six equals zero. There is no common factor here between six, 13, and six. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just, just like before, I set up my parentheses, except it's gonna be a little bit more complicated this time. Set up my parentheses. And the reason why it's a little bit more complicated is because now I have, it's not just b and b, I have a different, uh, some different possibilities here. I could have three b times b, or two b, or I could have six b times one b. So I have two different possibilities, so now I have a little bit more to take into consideration. Then for this one, I guess I'll use purple. I used the wrong color. I have factors of six. So I need to also keep in mind that this middle term is negative, so I should be using um, negative factors of positive six. Let me go ahead and do this. Okay. Negative factors of six are gonna be negative three, negative two, negative six, negative one. Okay. A couple different options here. Um, I'm gonna have to play around with some numbers. Let's go ahead and try three B and two B here. It's a little bit of trial and error. There's a way to do it where there isn't trial and error, but in my opinion, once you do this enough, it's just as fast, if not faster. And if it becomes really complicated for this method, it's also gonna be super complicated for factor by grouping, which is taught by most people. And in, in, in my opinion, just use quadratic formula at that point. Okay, so we need to use some strategy here to get these factors, it's like a puzzle, to sum up to negative 13b. So how do we do that? Well, if I made this negative six and this positive one, we'd have our outside terms multiply together to give us, um, let me change the color, we'd have negative 18b, and then we'd have 2b here, which would be a sum of negative uh, 16b. That's too big. So let's try reducing the size a little bit. Um, and the way we can do that is we can use smaller numbers. So we could change this, whoops. We could change this number to Uh, negative three and negative two. Let's try that one. So when we multiply that, the outside terms, we get negative nine B and the inside terms, we get negative four B. Negative four B plus negative nine B gives us negative 13 B. So now we did this correctly. 
this is one of the toughest things. This is where I lose a lot of students, but I'm telling you, it just it's like a puzzle. It's like cracking a combination lock. It just requires some practice, okay? So now we have our final um, factored form of 3b minus 2 and 2b minus 3, and that's equal to 0. So we need to set both of these equal to 0. 3b minus 2 equals 0, and 2b minus 3 equals 0. Add 2, add 2, 3b equals 2, divided by 3, divided by 3, b equals 2 over 3, or add 3, add 3, we get 2b equals 3, divided by 2, divided by 2, b equals 3 over 2. So there's our two answers there. You can use the same method we just did for the rest of these problems. Hope you guys found this helpful, and I'll see you next time on West Explains Best. Take care.